Welcome to Travel in Style, the series that brings you the very best of the best. We start off in the Canal du Midi in the southwest of France, on board the Alouette. The barges are operated by a float in France who own five boutique barges in total. Each vessel is uniquely decorated and has its own dedicated crew. And according to the guests who fall in love with these floating hotels, each boat has its own personality. The Alouette is the only luxury barge in the afloat in France fleet that can navigate the narrow locks of the Canal du Midi. The selection of river and canal routes chosen for these delightful holidays of float pass through some of the finest scenery in France. If you choose to simply lie back, relax, and do absolutely nothing, you will discover that time almost stands still, and yet the panoramic views are constantly changing. The changes are subtle, and each bend in the stream is a revelation. Much of the scenery you travel through has remained unchanged for centuries. This region, the Languedoc Roussillon, is rich with many quaint medieval towns and villages to explore. This is the land of the Cathars, who in the 12th century led very austere lives. Sex and wealth were banned, as was good food and wine. Thankfully, times have changed with some of the best restaurants and vineyards in France following the route of the Canal du Midi on its journey from the chilly Bay of Biscay to the warm Mediterranean Sea. There is an unbridled display of bespoke furnishings below the sun deck. She was newly refurbished in 2008 to the highest standards. This lounge includes a hi-fi system for your MP3 player, internet facilities, and, of course, a plasma TV, along with a substantial DVD library. She is fully air-conditioned and accommodates four passengers in two cabins that are located well above the waterline. The cabins are all en suite, with full-size double beds, giving the rooms a bedroom feel, rather than that of cabins on board a boat. Her sun deck provides the perfect place to relax, and enjoy the passing scenery. Actually, the Alouette is the ideal barge for a family holiday. Should you prefer to explore this medieval region from land rather than the river, there really is no better base than the walled city of Carcassonne. This UNESCO designated World Heritage Site has restaurants, bars, and souvenir shops galore crammed into a maze of winding cobbled streets, turrets, and towers. Atop the city between two historic landmarks, the Romanesque Chateau Comtal and the Gothic Basilica of Saint Nazaire, stands the only five-star hotel within the walls, the Hotel de la Cité. Set in its own glorious gardens, the hotel prides itself on offering the very best of regional food from its Michelin star restaurant. In early morning, executive chef Jérôme Rion visits the market of Carcassonne to handpick the finest local ingredients for his dishes. He particularly loves the autumn with its array of game, mushrooms, and truffles. The market stalls offer a wonderful array of fruit and vegetables. But today, Jérôme is looking for fresh fish for tonight's menu at the Barbican restaurant. Meanwhile, as the sun rises above the turrets of the walled city, the day-trippers are coached in from the equidistant towns of Narbonne and Toulouse. By noon, the narrow walkways, ramparts, and restaurants will bulge to capacity.
In the summer months, the tiny alleys become almost impossible to navigate as a frenzy of tourists shop for medieval souvenirs, including gray plastic swords resembling those used by knights, complete with helmets and breastplates for small, overexcited children. For those lucky enough to stay within the walls, the early evening is by far the best time to explore, as the last of the stragglers pack their day bags and get ready for their coach journey back down the auto routes of southern France. It's worth spending a few days in this delightful town. It will take you that long to discover the best of the local restaurants and, of course, to sample the many wines from this region. Inside, the hotel is worth exploring as much as the city itself. Its stained glass windows, irregular stone walls, carved mahogany woodwork, fairy tale corridors, and magical stone spiral staircases are all as intriguing as the historical memorabilia and superb paintings of past medieval life that hang on the walls. Inside, the rooms are spacious and elegant, each individually designed in classic style with views to the ramparts. Some have terraces and balconies, while the lower floor junior suites have private gardens with convenient access to the quiet haven of the hotel's swimming pool. In the kitchen, the chef has returned, armed with fresh herbs picked from the garden and the fish from the market. He's about to prepare one of the most popular dishes on his a la carte menu. Sea bass steak, braised with artichokes, tomatoes and courgette, juice with olives and basil. Jerome was appointed as executive chef at Hotel de la Cité in February 2006. He was born in the small town of Bourg-en-Bresse, where as a young boy, Jerome recalls enjoying watching his grandmother in her kitchen, preparing some of the regional dishes he is now so fond of. Her inspiration has certainly brought him a long way. In 2008, he and his team were rewarded as the Michelin star was confirmed for his hotel's restaurant. High praise indeed, and his clients would say deservedly so. Here you can sample some of the best wines that France can offer. But it's a little-known fact that in the 16th century, a monk from the Abbey of St. Hilaire, just eight miles south of Carcassonne, discovered that his carefully corked bottles of wines had become effervescent. And so, the very first bottle of bubbly was born. You can still taste this famous wine, the Blanquette de Limoux, produced in exactly the same way, but less accidentally. After a fine meal, why not sample the other fine French products next to the log fire? Cognac or Calvados? A perfect finish to a perfect day. Prague is the capital and largest city of what is now the Czech Republic, formerly Czechoslovakia. And residing over it sits Prague Castle, the largest occupied castle in the world, full of treasures to explore. Prepare yourself for a feast of history, architecture, and culture. And what better way to start our day here than on a morning boat journey along the River Vlatava to look up at the wonders that surround us. So it's up anchor and away we sail with a dedicated multi-skilled captain that doesn't just pilot our vessel, but gives an in-depth guide to the city's secrets. Did you know, for instance, that aside from being regularly voted among the 10 most beautiful cities in Europe, it was nearly flooded in 2002, with the river rising to only a few feet below the bridges. But today is calm, and the beauty of the city is starting to sink in. So maybe it's time for some more historical facts as we sail along on our river cruise of Prague. We have here a protected city as, since 1992, it has been part of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO for short. This ensures that future generations will be able to ponder and learn all the fascinating influences the city has and has given.
Prague is really an open-air museum of the highest class and one best explored by boat or foot. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, yes, the famous Charles Bridge that was featured in the blockbuster Mission Impossible is one of the many locations used in the city of Spires for famous Hollywood movies. So now it's time to leave this Hollywood setting to visit our stunning hotel, the Kempinski Hibernska. These elegant arches await your welcome. This hotel is rumored to have once been a palace and then a hospital. Now, however, after meticulous restorations and even the addition of extra floors, the hotel offers sublime and artistic surroundings to relax in. There are few suites to compare with this presidential apartment, with its large decking area and views over the garden, jacuzzi, dining table for 14, lounge, office area, and of course, open plan kitchen. We believe um, our room sizes are compare very favorably to um, our immediate competitors in Prague. Uh, I think we offer the most generous rooms and we've adopted the slogan, the luxury of space in the heart of Prague, which, because we believe for our type of customer, the luxury traveler, space is of premium value. Yes, Mr. Nemli is quite right, as finding space in a city that has been built since the 11th century is not always such an easy task. So rest assured that your stay at this hotel will most certainly not be a cramped one. It's time to leave this grand hotel for the time being and enjoy some more of this wonderful city with a stroll up to Prague Castle to burn off some of the hearty hotel food we so much enjoyed. The castle is full of surprises, which you will shortly see. However, it all starts off beautifully with the hourly changing of the guard dressed in their national regalia and a brand of sunglasses made famous by Tom Cruise in Top Gun. So, true to nature, the clouds have dispersed and the sun comes to shine on us yet again, bringing this city to life. And maybe this is an apt time for a quote from the writer Penelope Gilead. Prague is a vertical Venice steps everywhere. The Prague Castle is the biggest castle complex in the world which is still inhabited so that means there are still people living there and it's also the seat of the most important uh, person in this country which is now the president. He doesn't live there but he can use his apartment there. The cathedral is the St. Vitus Cathedral and it took 600 years to complete that building. So they started in 1344 under Charles IV and in 1930 approximately it has been uh, almost finished. It's Gothic, uh, they inspired themselves by the cathedrals in southern France and uh, uh, actually also one of the first architects was from northern France, uh, a certain Matthias of Arras. You will see uh, in the cathedral uh, that there's a lot of space and the walls are uh, usually not completely filled and there are huge windows, uh, stained glass windows, which I really recommend to have a look at. It is through these vast amounts of colored windows that the sun sets on the west and before it settles behind the Bohemian mountains, the pillars of the church come alive with sublime colors. This cathedral has so many beautiful glass windows that you'll risk straining your neck trying to admire them all. And that wouldn't be surprising as the cathedral is over 95 meters in height and 320 in length. There are various tombs within the cathedral, one belonging to John of Nepomuk, which is covered in over two tons of silver, who became a saint shortly after his death. But the most significant 
is that of King Wenceslaus himself. The outside of St. Vitus is adorned with complex carvings and sculptures that really shows off its Gothic status. Its spires reach for the sky so that even behind the 570 meter wall of the castle, they can be seen from the city below. As we walked around the huge castle grounds, we came across another of its hidden little secrets, a magical street called Golden Lane. The Golden Lane is in the very uh, back part of the castle, a very narrow lane with tiny houses built next to the fortification wall. And in the 16th century, there uh, was a legend that the alchemists would live there and uh, they were trying to make artificial gold and also they were looking for the stone of the wise and elixir for eternal life. Uh, until now you can see that the, those houses, they are, uh, it's possible to visit them inside. There are some shops and uh, in one of the, the houses, number 22, uh, Franz Kafka would live too in 1916. A perfect little street and ideal for window shopping. Certainly this young lady has a new take on that phrase. So it's back to the town center, of which there are actually two. One is in the lesser quarter on one side of the river, and the other is here in the old town. I would say that uh, for people who are interested in architecture, Prague is like an open book. You can see 12 centuries of architecture on a rather small uh, surface, protected uh, by UNESCO now, and it has been preserved uh, uniquely in the world. Uh, there has been no much, not much damage during Second World War, for instance. So uh, I would uh, mention for, uh, the Gothic period, uh, a nice example of a Gothic structure is the bridge, which is now it used to be the Stone Bridge, but now it's called the Charles Bridge. Named after King Charles IV, whose influence played a key role in Prague's design. But here we have our friend St. John of Nepomuk, whose statue is thought to bring good luck to all that touch it. Well, all those hands have certainly kept it shining. The bridge has a total of 30 statues and a slightly eerie feel. Prague is great fun to explore. The Old Square is a must on any tourist's checklist and is home to a rather interesting clock with possibly an even more interesting story. The astrological clock is located on Old Town Square on the uh, tower of the city hall and uh, during daytime every hour you can see the 12 apostles passing by on that astronomical clock. You can see there also uh, three different uh, types of time, uh, which uh, you have to really look closely to discover uh, what time it is. There's also a legend connected with this clock. One of the clockmakers has been blinded uh, in order uh, that he would not make uh, the same clock somewhere else. And uh, even though he was blind, he took revenge. He made a mistake. Uh, in the clock and uh, for a hundred years nobody could uh, find out uh, how, to, uh, how to, uh, to repair the clock. So that's, that really happened. Fortunately, everything seems to be working just fine now. And having been blinded by astrological science, time is now moving on. So we take a final look at the wonderful artwork on the buildings of the Old Town Square and take a short walk past the Gothic Church of Our Lady. Back to our hotel for a refreshing drink in the Two Steps Bar. Busy as bees in the kitchen, head chef Merrick Fickner and his team are preparing to impress their evening clientele with exquisite dishes from all over the world. But we'll let Merrick tell you more about that. The name of the restaurant is La Grill, but it's not a steakhouse somebody would imagine after, under the name Le Grill Steakout. It's, it's a fine dining restaurant with uh, international cuisine and has a touch of Mediterranean cuisine and some of the Czech dishes as well. So my, I have a few signature dishes. Um, one of the signature dishes as a starter is uh, grilled tiger shrimps on green peas puree, pancetta chip and balsamic reduction. Design of the restaurant, it's, uh, it's pretty much modern style restaurant. 
we have, uh, for example, very interesting is we have the background with the lights. We can change uh, for different uh, scene of the of the light. We have in the middle of the restaurant is hanging a large uh, red chandelier, and um, yeah, it's pretty much modern style of the of the restaurant. The style of my cuisine is international uh, fusion cuisine with uh, Mediterranean touch. I have as well some few Czech dishes, but mainly it's um, international international food. I have worked uh, for two years in Saudi Arabia and there is a uh, Lebanese kitchen for example very much popular so I have some touch of a uh, few dishes Lebanese when we have for example buffet for our guests we have hummus there, mutabal and um, the guests they love it yeah. Prague is a cornucopia of fine restaurants so for those wishing to try a night somewhere else well then look no further to find the wonderful Villa Richter. The building was built in was well, 1836 by Mr. Richter. Then it was taken away from him in the Second World War. He also worked as embassy of Cuba, and then it was used for Czech secret services. Well, this is one secret we didn't want to keep. The conservatory is the room with the view at the villa, and with a unique grapevine made of crystal glass that oozes blue light, it creates the perfect setting for a romantic meal the wine cellar it used to be dungeon when it was uh, actually for the secret services and now it is a wine cellar which is actually built in a cliff. We have over 2,500 bottles and over 450 different types of wine. The best wine in our cellar is Chateau Giscour which is coming from the village Labad in France in Margot. Then you would need to prepare about 3,500 US dollars to actually purchase and try the wine. Not quite on our budget this time, but we will be back. And who wouldn't with nighttime views over St. Nicholas Cathedral, Charles Bridge and Prague Castle, and so much more. The city of 100 spires comes into its own after the sun sets, and this time is illuminated with artificial light of differing colors to bring the most out of all this wondrous architecture. Well, sadly, that's all we have time for. Be sure to tune in again and travel in style with us as we endeavor to find the very best in luxury accommodations from around the globe.